All right, guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. This is the strongest podcast in the CrossFit space. I am Thomas yep. Lennon, and over here, I got Xander Fallick, and we have a guest, Dex Hopkins, coming on a little bit later, but um, he's running a little late, so I wanted to start it anyways. But uh, Xander, how was your Memorial Day, and did you do Murph? Great Memorial Day. I was down in Austin um, for a few days with some friends, um, spent some time by the pool, got a lot of coffee, uh, went to a fun gym that I dropped in at called Collective. Uh, I did not do Murph today because I drove home seven hours. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So uh, funny story for me is I I did Murph today, but bef- the day before there is this girl that like trains at my gym. She, she does like CrossFit style workouts. Okay. And I was like, Hey, are you doing Murph? You know? And you know, it, she's like, no, I was going to do it today, but you know, why are you doing it tomorrow? And I was like, yes. And now he's like, well, she's like, well, what time are you going to do it? And I'm like five, I'll, I'll be, I'll be at the gym at five 30 in the morning. And so she was like, I don't, I'm not good at pull-ups or anything like that. I'm like, just use bands. I don't, I don't, I do not care. I just need someone with me just to kind of push me a little bit. And I went full dummy on the first mile. First mile. Ah, rookie mistake. Yeah. And I, and, and another thing, well, thank God I partitioned it. I typically go straight through the whole time, the whole way, like 100, 200, 300. But I partitioned it like, when I got to the squats, Wait, I, hold on. What was your partition strategy? So it was 5, 10, 15. Okay, you did Cindy. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So so at the 15 squats, my legs were on fire. Fire. And I was like, oh, God, this is stupid. You just went but, full luck it. That's all yeah, you did. Pretty much. And then for on the plus side though, I made it through all five of the pull-ups. With no issues. Like I held onto the bar the whole time, did not like break it up or anything like that. Good. Hey, I'm hey, just I'm happy of, you I'm broke an hour. hour. Yeah, yeah, it was under an hour. So first time, first time ever. But uh, but it was it was crazy because um we were running on treadmills for that mile. And so I was like, Yeah, I know this the it was like the middle of the it was like really dark out. No, no, so, no. It's so, fine to run on a treadmill. I just know you bumped up the speed because you're like, oh, I'm on a treadmill. It's easier. Mistakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you, but, uh, you, you completely fooled fooled about and found out. Yes. And so the last mile I did, I was 0.2 miles away from finishing. And all of a sudden, my treadmill just stopped. The power went out. <laughs> and I was like, shit. And so it was funny. Like, there's a guy, there's a guy two, two, um, two runners over. He had the same problem, but his, his machine shut off too. And he's like, what the hell? So I'm like frantically like trying to figure a way where I'm going to go. It's I need like, to run it. 400 meters. How yeah. do I do this? Please. And so I, I ran to like one of the, the farthest, farthest treadmill and just went full dummy, just like sprinted as far as fast as I can. And I finally made it with like three seconds left before that hour was over. God. Well, Hey, great job. You, yeah. you panic found panic ran and you got it done. Yeah, I was I was close to I was so close to just running outside, but then all of a sudden I was like, I'll just I'll just stay here. But uh, but yeah, my legs are still sore. I literally used a massage. You're gun. gonna not Re- have your morning tomorrow is gonna be terrible, and you know. I this. know. Well, well, well. On the plus side, I used a mas- massage gun three times, and cool. then I stretched my quads a lot today. So okay, there we I, go. I, Maintenance I'm ho- helpful. I'm, I'm hope hope cross my fingers. I'm hoping I won't be as sore as I think I might be. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Cross my fingers. I'm still going to go work out tomorrow. But that the girl I tried was I trained with, she's like, I think I might take a rest day tomorrow. And I was like, probably for the best for her. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. She doesn't does not need that in her life whatsoever. No. And it, and she she was she was beating me like halfway into the actually no th- um, two two thirds into the into the whole workout. Good for her. And I was like, I, I, I was dying. I was, and plus, I'm an idiot too. I had a piece of Carvel ice cream cake the night before, and it was just like sitting in my stomach the whole time. I know, I know. I don't, I don't. Everyone think. at home, I just shook my head and just pure shame. It's like, 
So, hmm, you had high blood sugar. Hmm, like you're just really just setting yourself up for success here, aren't you, pal? Listen, I cannot <laughs> like if if Carvel if if there was Carvel ice cream cake around, I am eating it. That's not fair. Carvel ice cream cake is some of the best out there. Honestly, I I don't care for any other cake except for Carvel ice cream. Sponsor me, please. So. But, but yeah, so that was uh, pretty much the gist of my morning and, um, but yeah, but other than that, how's training going for you? It's great. Um, I am enjoying it quite a bit right now. So, um, are, are you still doing, want... are you still doing like the running training at all or no, like I'm running two days a week, but nothing okay. super crazy. Um, I want to snatch 275 by the end of the year. Shit. So I've been doing, yeah, a bunch of like squat holds, overhead squat holds, dead, dead hangs, um, just a bunch of nonsense. Uh, so it is brutal right now. Um, yeah. and, are you, are you, are you going to misfit training camp in Philly? Philly? Yeah. 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 I would like to go, but of course I'm not going to go. So, but yeah, yeah it's it like should, you, it should be fun. it's like anything else cross related. It's like, I, I I'll go. It's like, you won't go. Um, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, Brandon Luckett was get, Brandon Luckett was giving me shit too. He's like, you got to go to some of these events, and I'm like, I don't know if I be able to, but we'll see. Yep, got to go to an no. event sometime. Yeah, yeah. So what? So do you know like how how Misfit Misfit Athletics like picks the areas where they do the the camps at all? Or well, like the past three years, there was there was a little. Uh, little little virus yeah um so most of the camps have been at hq um typically when like other gyms want to host and if you participated on a discord um they were asking for gyms like if anybody wanted to host a camp um because mm-hmm. people were asking about it and so the gym they chose crossfit raid um justin rementer and his wife melanie um own that gym in philadelphia and i know them and they reached out about like hey can we host it can you guys do a camp if we host down in philly okay okay so, it, so is it like in the city or is it like on the outskirts i am not sure i have not looked it up at all um i know signups are through the 31st we need a few more to make sure that camp happens um i i know it's in the philly area but it's definitely not in the city because the city's um not not the, not, the, not, not the best not the best not the best yeah if if anybody if anybody has a chance this is for the listeners if anybody has a chance to go to one of these camps for misfit i mean i to be honest do you, it I've for heard, tom yeah do it for me but i've heard nothing but good things about it i mean if they help you with your called an athlete iq just like learning about how to pace how to do the workouts and like kind of think about how to execute some of these workouts as well. And it's, and it's fun too. Yeah. It's typically two and a half days. Um, there are, it's, uh, warm up movement, like to critique and make sure everyone's on the same page workout. And then like, that's usually what it is for like, it's a Friday evening, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. And on Saturday, Sunday, there's you, there is a, what do I want to call them? Like more of a seminar. Like if anybody's had their L1, um, it's typically like a pre just talk, um, just about mindset, um, nutrition, uh, goal setting, those types of things, especially as competitors. And again, it's a commute, it's a competitor program, but the level is much more like brought back to make sure that everyone's on the same page. This isn't like a, like quarterfinals prep camp or something like that. This is more for the entire community. If you're new to CrossFit, you've been doing it for years, you're interested in just kind of just seeing um, another way of programming or something else, definitely show up. And that's what you're going to end up receiving um, from all the coaches and the staff. Yeah. So if you're like, like Xander said, if you're brand new, just go to the camp, you'll, you'll learn a whole lot of stuff and you get to see some, some stud athletes too, as well. And have, and meet some people that could be your friends for life. Yeah, like maybe some games athletes will show up that you're interested in, Caroline Connors and Paige Semenza. Um, maybe probably Austin, if he can get the time off, or whomever else shows up. So it'll be a great time. Just definitely be there um, in October in Philly, fall time, northeast, perfect time to be there. Yeah, yeah. So um, qu- since you said Caroline and Austin, so are they still in Virginia? Like what's the, what's the whole 
deal with that? Or are they got back up in Maine? They, no, they moved to Virginia. Um, they're coaching at CrossFit Krypton. They work at Krypton. Oh, oh okay. And so okay. they're doing indie. Um, and so they're competing this weekend. It's so it's so strange because they finally like I've just been waiting two weeks for my friends, and I'm just like, can they just compete now? Because I really just want to watch this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so are they part of? Are they still part of Misfit, or like just are they just mm-hmm. working with Crypt? With crypt they're just working. They're like affiliate coaches. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, and they and at least they get Ben Smith to kind of look over them and kind of. Oh yeah, like them Ben's too, there. So. Yeah. So I think Ben qualified for Senny's. Did he? I, I, I'm probably wrong about this. I'm probably just trying to. I'm mixing up last year. Um, so. Well, speaking of ben's semis, what did you stupid strong? Yeah, oh, yes. I, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about semis this year? Like, how, do you think the right amount of people, the right people, made it into the CrossFit Games, or the workouts are like kind of not what you were looking for? No, it's like it's objectively a very good test with through all six workouts. If you really try to put lay them out because of the like monostructural weightlifting one, that's going to just jack your heart rate. Um, it's one of those things where I wish the American attendance was better. The European and the Australians do such a good job of packing stadiums um, for those things. Like it's lackluster, especially being in Carson, if I'm just going to say that. And that's again, like how do you get buzz generate people to go, especially when like, if you look at the entire like West um, competitors and where mm-hmm. they came from, most of those folks are not from California. Nope. They have a couple, like the team side, it was a bunch from San Diego because of Invictus. But yeah. again, if you're having people from Canada, like it's like, it depends. Texas, like it's not exactly the easiest place to travel. It, like you can get to LA, but it's like, do people want to travel? Um, because I saw some folks, it's like, hey, back in the day, they filled up Del Mar. It's like, well, they filled Del Mar because all of California was there and it was drivable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you would think that it's Carson and it's the tennis stadium and all that history from yeah. back in the day, you would see like more and more people. And I, and I was watching some of the live streams and even people were commenting on the, on the live chat, like Europeans and Australians being like, what, why can't, why can't the Americans like fill up their stadiums? I think it, it's also one of those tough weekends where it's like, okay, it's, a lot it's of Memorial schools Day. are ending. Yeah. It's Memorial Day mm-hmm. weekend. Like that's a very tough weekend, even though that's when um, the West, like that, the, uh, what was it? NorCal. Yeah. I think it was the NorCal region was mm-hmm. where Del Mar is. Um, and the, the California super region, like that's where they competed. Like it was always this weekend. It's just hard. Like, I don't know if it was like, so a lot of kids are getting out of school unless you're in the Northeast, East coast kids. Um, Cause they'll go through June. Um, holiday so that leads to holidays um traveling for sports for their like other people's kids or something else it's just one of those not exactly like a cool place because you're covered in the tennis stadium anyway so there's Mm -hmm. that too to compete with yeah yep and also i i have some concerns about knoxville too i don't think that place is going to fill up either hey i'm hoping you go buy your tickets go like I'm yeah. one of those folks that I'm just going to tell people to go buy tickets. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping it's not the same thing. Syndicate typically has a pretty good crowd. Um, I'm just hoping a ton of people show up and show out for them because that's yeah. like the best thing to do for like the sport and the athletes and trying to figure out ways to generate that type of buzz and activity. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think if they moved it to Nashville or some place close to Nashville, it'd be a little bit better? No, like it, I think it's all like, Moving it in Tennessee, like maybe, like maybe, like I can't, re- like you're just moving it a couple of hours one way, like, m- like that. That's the thing. It's like you're just moving it. It's like, is it better if it was in like Baltimore, where I believe Twelve Labors and the um, folks who own that gym run Syndicate? Um, mm-hmm. If that would be better, or just putting it back in just going to like Florida like they did last year. I'm just hoping like it just like they're able to kind of, again, it's this whole is CrossFit in charge of these events or are they not in charge? Like we just also keep flip-flopping. So I'm not going to put this on the organizer's expense because they keep not running it and then not, and then doing it. And it's like, guys, like we, they, we don't have their again, consistency. 
Mm-hmm. Do you think that CrossFit Media ne- CrossFit Media needs to do like more more what media? promoting? Well, exactly. That, I mean, that's CrossFit, like eight. Like that's the thing. It's like you're saying, like you're asking for HQ. Mm-hmm. So I, if from an HQ perspective, yeah, like we would hope. Like again, they're a business. Like I'm. Like I'm. I think it's just keeps being the same talking points and trying to find a way. It's like okay, are they? Wanting to grow the sport? Are they trying to monetize the affiliates? Like what's like, and again, Don, like they're, I think they're just working through it. Like they're trying to figure it out. Like there's no perfect answers to any of this stuff because Mm -hmm. everyone's just going to be like, Hey, let's just go back to regionals or super regionals. And it's like, guys, like we're going to change the season structure again. Again. Like that. It's like, can we, let's start getting some consistency for a few years before we start implementing new things again. Yeah, yeah. And I believe I, I was looking on like the not the Google analytics, I was looking at some analytics like for, for something I forget for like maybe my YouTube channel or whatnot. So um, but like in like 2008 or not eight, um, shoot, 2012 or 14, that was like the big boom of CrossFit, roughly, for like mm-hmm. the, the all like the for like SEO or anybody like you know, Google searching. I can believe that. Cause that's yeah. like right around when I found CrossFit too. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the big thing. So if that's the uh, normal, like when people like, so Froning takes over um, a lot of expansion. HQ has an in-house media team. That's full-time staff. That is no mm-hmm. longer the case. I believe. No. So no. from my understanding, if that's not the case. It's just, that's not what they wanted to do. And they've been, slowly and surely like letting media staff go over the past five years because it all started in 20 no it started in 2018 because 2019 was the sectionals year so yeah and like that that's like the media is like one of the most important yeah things not, not, not not even like just regular media just like social media like you know people that actually know the sport and know what's going on and can like pump out content like all the time but it's it's an expense and it's like hey if we're just trying to monetize affiliates like do we want to do this themselves like the thing is like there's a lot of other great content out there that are trying to cover the sport and do it in a great way um outside of us like brian friend does a great job lauren khalil great friend of mine like she does a great job Mm -hmm. um so be friendly podcast bella martin uh and uh pc and the pups like like I love those guys. Like those are people like that are trying to grow it and cover it in a way. And they're trying to just make like, again, it's business side and it's growing. Like how many affiliates can we have? Like it's growing the space and it's, there's also just a lot of like, there's a lot of other things to do and compete with like NBA and NHL is going on this weekend. Like, yeah, again, like there's not just one thing. It takes time. And if we're just trying to yearn for like the golden years, if that's what we want to call it of 20, let's yeah, call it never going to happen. 2011 to 2016, like, right. Like those are probably some of the best years mm-hmm. of things just because it was Froning wins four. Hey, Frazier's going to take over. He ends up losing to Ben, Ben. And then Frazier comes back and then just starts his reign of dominance. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. Like we need that. It's just trying to find the ways to, how can we encourage everybody and grow the sport instead of just, again, I'm not somebody who's trying to just poop on the entire sport. I would like to grow it and quit critiquing everything. And it's like, okay, so, okay, here's critiques. What are ways to fix this? Like, how can we, like, how can everybody bring the community and doing it? And I think it's just the local level has to encourage like CrossFit at home and what it does for your community and the sport of CrossFit are really competing ideologies at the end of the day. Like, and that's a tough part, even though the beauty of CrossFit, there's a ton of it, especially on the sports side, but it's also amazing what it does for like health and fitness, just for your mom and dad, Mary Jane Mm -hmm. and Joe Bob down the street. Yeah. And it's funny, like the majority of the people that, that do CrossFit don't even really care about the CrossFit games. Yeah. Like that's also, and like, that's totally okay. Like, honestly, like at the end of the day, it's like, not everybody's going to go to the games anyway. And it takes a lot of hard work to get there. Like uh, who punched their ticket for the first time is an indie. Let's say Kyra uh, Morgan this year. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Amy Kringle. Chrissy Barra. Uh, 
Yep. It's like it takes many years to get to your first CrossFit Games, let alone doing 11, Mm -hmm. BKG and Cole. So it's just – and you just got to like – you gotta want it. Um, and so it's just one of those things where it's just hard. It, and yeah. it's, I think it starts at a local level to be like, Hey, let's all watch, like watch it at home. Like if you're in Maine, if you're in Pennsylvania, like you're not probably not traveling. Right. But you can at least get like some people over, watch the heats commentary, like those kinds of things. And it's like, okay, cool. Like that's what we have to do at the local level, but it's, mm. there's so much content. Like, again, like, even just creating content, it's like, it's gotta be engaging in those kinds of things. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, yeah. how much content is out there about 89,000 other things. Yeah. I mean, even if you look on YouTube for like CrossFit channels, it's like compared to like NBA channels or like MLB channels, it is like minuscule compared to like all the other like YouTube channels. It's insane. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. It's just, it's going to take time. Like, it's mm-hmm. not a perfect pill. It's like, we have to find a way to keep it going because, like, at the end of the day, nobody wants to lose this. Like, I think the CrossFit, the sport of CrossFit is amazing and beautiful in and of itself. Yep. Yep. I mean, look what branched off to branched off of it. You know, Iron Tribe. Did you say is, Grid League? Oh, God. No, I, I'm, like, not, I'm, I'm not saying Grid League. No, but like. But no, Gridley is a competition. That's it's completely different compared to. I find it very different. Certain. It's not. Yeah. It's funky yeah. functional fitness is the best way to describe it. Yeah, but 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 to be honest with you, what I do like about their whole like when they do the competitions, all the judges are being paid. And also, yeah, but that also costs money, and you need sponsors, and like you're true, true, true. again, yeah. it's like there's many other things. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so but uh, but also um, I was talk. I talked to Jeff Zawali. He owns uh, CrossFit State uh, State Classy CrossFit, so in San okay. Diego. So yeah. um, he was talking about with his media because he has a big following on TikTok and and also like Instagram, and his his gym is amazing, amazing looking like the new one he's at right now. But he always he always said um, it's his Instagram page for the gym is not about the clients. It's about the future clients that are coming in. And so he's trying to make it pleasing for possible new members that are coming in. Yeah. It's great seeing like, you know, Jane Doe did her first pull up or like, you know, you know, Carl over here did his first, like, you know, I don't know, like first snatch or first dumbbell snatch or whatever, like ringing the bell. That's great. But it's like, it's not attracting future, future potential more clients. And that's not yeah. going to really help CrossFit in, in it pretty much. Yeah. And it's hard to use, like, again, so many different ways to use social media and like how many different type of fitness experiences are there? Like boutique fitness experiences, like, you could one can argue CrossFit is a unique bo- boutique experience mm-hmm. for some people. Then there's Orange Theory. Then there's Pure Bar. Then there's Soul Cycle. Like if we use those, like they're similar, different. They have their own mediums, and it's just trying to do like figure out where does what does CrossFit want those things to be. And like I don't really see people from Soul Cycle going into competing in like the Tour de France. Like that's not no. a thing. Like no. it's crazy because the story of CrossFit is like, Hey, you can just be an affiliate member. And if you want to get serious, like it's going to take some work, but you can go to quarters. You're more than likely going to go to quarters, really have a chance to go to semis, potentially the games. If you really stick to it, like that's mm-hmm. the cool thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. So funny story is um, we were, my wife and I were thinking about uh, owning, owning a gym, not a CrossFit gym. It was like a boutique gym, like some, like it was like we were just talking about it. We weren't gonna pull like the any time like fitness kind of idea or no, it was like burn boot camp or something like that. Okay. So so anyway, so we were like just like like hey, what do you think? Or like you so know, just hit how... like just like usual yeah, like, like hey, hit classes. Gonna... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And so because the problem is is like there's one in our town, but it's like so packed that like if we go to the other other side of the town, it's perfectly fine. So we can okay. get more people there, but I'm like, why don't we go to CrossFit gym? Like, I know the space, I know what I need to do to, you know, coach people and, and whatnot. And she's like, a lot of people think it's not, it's, it's people, people might be scared of going into a CrossFit gym 
and possibly doing that workout because they see obviously seeing the people from the games and whatnot they might be they might be like a little wary of like oh am i gonna like be like this or look like this you know and, and the like, devil you well, know is better than the devil you don't it's it's the yeah. it's again it's coming back to marketing like making sure hopefully hq is trying to overcome these things it's like it's again it's what's what is reality but what is also manufactured advertising and the word of mouth is like CrossFit's not safe. We like anybody that's listening to this podcast for the most part knows that's not the case. Like anybody, like you know, like you don't need to be doing all the three, like 400, 500 pound deadlifts. Like that's not a normal day. Like that's not affiliate no. programming. <laughs> that is not like you're like, you're not doing muscle ups every, like every week or every day. It's like, you want to learn these skills, practice. Like you want to just stick with your pull-ups, like, doing strict pull-ups, then going to kip like uh kipping and then like butterfly if that's the like progressions. Like trying to stay safe. Like at the end of the day, it's trying to like combat metabolic disease and ultimately just have like a lifestyle that allows you to play with your kids because there's twenty three other hours in the day and doing those things. But it's yeah just very tough like any gym. Like any gym's gonna like have a tough time at the end of the day. Yeah. You gotta you gotta think that in one week working out for one hour or even a half an hour is like point point zero one percent of like that whole week yes so and it's that's a rough that's a rough number i forget i, I don't yeah. know if that's like the full number i would but say like hey if you're doing seven hours a week and there is 168 hours really like we're just gonna like your very minuscule amount of of that it's like three percent maybe yeah maybe three and a half so yeah that's gonna be the tough part like it's just trying to encourage bring your friends just hey like let's just watch crossfit like i'm a huge like my background play lacrosse all growing up i don't play lacrosse anymore hell yeah the ncaa championships are always memorial day weekend every year mm-hmm. always just fun to watch it's just fun yeah. to watch like and again it's just it's anybody want to watch this with me it's trying to encourage like try to find the casuals commentary is based based for the casuals not for the diehards yep yeah and funny you talk about lacrosse i didn't see the game this today who who won do you know i i didn't watch it i was like in my truck like oh, it would have right. been played yeah. at one like i was in my truck yeah. like it was gonna be played at one so i was trying to call people like i've never left more voicemails for my friends in my life where it's like oh hey man um congrats to you and jesse on the games just want to check in driving home see you later call brandon brandon doesn't pick up hey man congrats uh hope you have a great day tell chris and i said hi i'll talk to you later it's like okay cool left a voicemail for dex hopkins then he called me back at least yeah <laughs> yeah but it was funny um the that saturday the women's national championship was going on it was like bc and yep. northwestern and so yeah. my son w- is not he i don't know why like i'm like i'm like bennett you would if you play lacrosse you'd be really good like because you have me that has been played for 23 years and coached for eight and so like just watch just watch a game like watch and just, and so he realized that Boston College is playing so of course he's all about like any Massachusetts sports team so he's like watching the game and so Smart on him. he's he's like is this is this what guys do and like and I'm like no it's completely different but but it's still it's way it's, more fun it, yeah it's but still it's exciting so this is exciting so like the whole time during we were at lunch we we're watching the game and he was just like laser focused onto the tv for that women's game and i was like see like if you watch the men's game it's even better and you'll have so much more fun if you play it yeah but it's just get like getting like it's encouraging like getting people to see that stuff and it's just trying to like and hopefully he does play like at the end of the day it's just trying to grow the game like at one point lacrosse was the fastest growing game in the u.s i don't or sport in the u.s it's been taken over by something else at this point but it's i think pickleball probably but yeah. it, it's like it, at a youth level, unlikely, sure. but it's just eh, probably it is. It's just going to take a lot more courts to get, but to the point, it's just like trying to bring people into the gym, try to grow it that way. Cause it's, you're not going to just send out an email list and get 50 new members. I don't think that mm-hmm. like in, this is just hard because word of mouth is the best thing ever. And we, as a society, it's like, if you're doing CrossFit, you're probably better than 99.9% of the population on fitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
my question for you, since you're kind of, you know, you're a talking head like me. So how, how, how do you think that outside media like in the CrossFit space can help grow the brand a little bit better, but like, can you define not, outside media for me? Cause if it, we're just going to like, is like, that like the ESPN right. CVS is no, no, CBS no, Sports like, and NBC's? no, like, like be friendly fitness, like those, yeah. like the podcast, like YouTube channels and stuff like that. Like how, like, how would you, how would you, in your mind, what would grow the sport and benefit like, you know, podcasts like like mine and the be friendly yeah. fitness that could kind of like be Dude, like a brian, mutual agreement you gotta one you gotta go to the events like and brian does that like he is brian's world tour 23 and i think he's on 2k 24 world tour like mm -hmm. he's shown up to the events lauren khalil is going to the events it's being it's boots on the ground if you're um doing those things to make sure you're telling the stories behind the scenes um and again i savan is savan and he does a great job with the behind the scenes like it, like you, like there's nobody in the space that does behind the scenes like he does, especially on the athlete weekend. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of the buttery bros. They're going to go on their tour of training camps again. I heard them on the broadcast yesterday talking about that. And they're really fun. It's getting them out there, but it's also guys, like you got to be able to pay for your business. You can't just be running these things at a net loss. Like that's also the hard part. It's like they're, trying to pay their bills. They're trying to make a living doing these types of things, telling these stories of the athletes and partnering with them. And then it's just trying to find a way to continue to monetize those relationships. So it's not just like, again, like if you're at the top, you're getting paid, like, especially if you're winning, but mm -hmm. dude, if you're just showing up and take it, like, big, like there's a huge, like, again, it's a business and you got to find ways to pay athletes. Um, and there's a steep drop off, like, even if you're a third, like, let's just call it what it is. It's like, if you're anything after fifth, like it's, you're scraping by. And like, I think a lot of people are surprised if you go see like, Hey, you went to the games, but you're coaching an affiliate class the following Tuesday. Cause you traveled mm -hmm. home Monday after the CrossFit games or even semis. Yeah. They're not even making close to like an, a, a normal salary just in that one, one time being there. Yeah. Like that's a tough part, but, um, like again, like if we're trying to look at the PC and the puffs, Brian, Lauren, um, Tommy, the buttery bros, like those guys are showing up to events and like non just us events. They're going to Europe. Um, uh, they're going to Australia. They're doing like, they're trying to make the most of their trips and making sure that they are, um, actively trying to, um, promote the sport in the, their unique ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, um, I did hear from Dave Castor. I, I listened to one of his like weekend reviews. And so one of the guys had a question and he's like, I don't train at affiliate, but I, here's my question for you. And the Dave, yes, Dave was so pissed. He's like, well, first of all, you need to be, you need to, you need to go to affiliate first. So yeah. And like, do hopefully that. that guy's not just in a garage gym, but again, it's just like, it's one of those things like just like, like CrossFit is built for the community. Show up to the community. Like, um, even if you're just buying a 10 pack of classes or whatever your affiliate is, like just show up on Saturdays, just go yeah. like once a week. It's just fun to just make some friends and, um, ex like just suffer with everybody. Like yeah. CrossFit ain't easy, like, but your the shared suffering really does make it that much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why when I did the open at Northeast, Northeast Georgia CrossFit that like, I didn't know anybody there. And like, but the good thing about that, that gym was they, they called me, um, they got, I just got a message from Dex. He can't make it, but all, all good. Um, and it's, it's okay. Shame, it's, it's, shame it's, a kid, it's, it's the kiddos. Shame. So, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, my nieces uh, aren't the easiest. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so, um, they, they called me a couple days before the open even started and said like, you know, when I signed up for a class for, I think that Friday, uh, Friday morning and they're like, Hey, I'm so and so. I'm from this. I'm from this CrossFit gym. I saw that you registered at our gym. Like, what are you planning to do? And like, they were very detailed and like questioning, not quite like in a good way, finding out like a little bit more about me Again, and it's running a doing, business and so. trying to like make sure, like, hopefully, like you'd sign up as a member. Like, obviously, you go to someplace closer. You got a family, you got other, you got work and stuff to do. Like, that is the ideal business experience. Again, mm -hmm. it's very hard for people, like, truly, at the end of the day, if you wanted to, like, if I wanted to just pay my affiliation fee, 
open up classes in my garage here at my apartment. I can, I won't, but I could. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, that is running a good business. Like the thing is like, you need a business to make money, but at the end of the day, it's about the relationships and how you treat your members and mm -hmm. like your community, because that's like the things you're telling me right now, like give me like the, you can ask Dex when he comes on about like running it, like working in an affiliate. That's the stuff people need to do. And like, it's like very little stuff that really does go a long way. Oh yeah. It's and it's extra it's, work, but it does make a big difference. Yeah. And it's mind boggling that people don't do that. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. So uh, hold on. Let me just text Dex real quick. No. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, all right, cool. So yeah, I mean, I, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a little, the little things go a long way, like you said. Yeah. So it's, it's not hard. It's not hard. Yeah. So, but, uh, shout out Hannah Hardy. Cool. Yes. Going, going to, uh, North America yeast, baby. She's going to be yeah. at syndicate crown this weekend. Super so, excited about it. So obviously the East coast is a little bit more stacked than the West coast for athletes. So they all have more qualifying spots. Yeah, they have more yep. yep. And so, um, what are you, what are you expecting out of the syndicate crowd from like, you know, athletes going in who might not make it that you think was was in the games last year? Obviously, in the female side, there's a lot of females that are not in the, um, not in the semifinals anymore because of like you know, oh yeah, pregnancy and you know back injuries or just like you know. Christ. So we're excited. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like the exciting part about it is um, like Tia's back. <laughs> if there's yes. like a story this weekend, like that is like the, like I would say that is the story that everyone should be paying attention to. Uh, like that's, I feel like everyone's going to ask like, okay, is she going to, how is she going to do relative to Laura? Mm. And actually, I, I just saw the leaderboard. Ben Smith is in the semifinals. Okay, so I knew that, and I'm also having the leaderboard in front of me. So yeah, I'm literally on my phone right now. So which is, I, let's I really start. Yeah. That on. So we are going to look at East. Well, do we? Let's start with the women since I brought up Tia because that's yep. the, like got it. That's going to be really fun to see. Um, let's see. I'm like, I'm biased. So shout out my friends Paige, um, Caroline, McKenna, Jenna McLotty. Um, Austin Spencer and Brandon True um, from Misfit Athletics. I'm also a huge fan of Anna Greer. I'm just gonna say it. She's gonna qualify. Oh, really? Okay. Just, All right. just calling it. Just throwing, throwing out positive vibes. Okay. Um, well, uh, obviously, Emma Lawson's probably a uh, bare mind of injury or anything like that. She's, she's gonna be in. Yeah, like I think the that one's gonna. I mean, a like the thing is, there's the people that are going to just pick up points because they have games experience. So mm -hmm. like an Amanda Barnhart shoulder would be a concern if I'm thinking about Amanda, right. Cause that's been a thing all season. And those 15 muscle ups on like day three is going to be a rough one. If yeah. you're handstand walking, um, muscle ups into a very like moderately heavy lunge, um, and the snatches like that's a, she could have a, like a pretty good, um, first two days and then that could be an unfortunate piece of it um yeah but well, and you also then, you also gotta worry you also gotta worry about like the the family home too because she she's she just adopted somebody uh a child that was it like two years ago a year ago and so like a year yeah yeah because um and like that that could affect some stuff too as well yeah. so so but, uh, that can definitely be it, but there's a lot of like Chloe Govan, David, um, Brooke Wells, Ashley Wozni, like Alexis it's just going to be this. Yeah. Alexis Raptus, DB energy is going to be there. Um, I'm also really excited to see Haley Adams and how she does. Cause it seems like, um, did you see uh, her latest post? No, she is ripped. Yeah. Absolutely like she's, ripped. Like, just yeah, she's a naturally right meaner now. athlete. So, um, I'm not commenting. On, I'm personally not commenting on it just because of her if, like discussions in the past. That's just my thing. I'm just yeah. like glad she looks jacked. I'm sure she's eating a shit ton. Good for her. Um, but it's just like, dude, I think Haley's going to probably – I'm excited to just see Haley on event one. Mm -hmm. Low-key excited. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And also I, my question with the, with the, the, the run, where are they going to do? Are they going to do it on like a, a treadmill or, or like a assault runner? I think treadmills are all out from if they like had that strength, like high rocks ish set up in Asia. Um, they're going to be running like that's it. Or, or, or like it, the, or like the lines at Disney, like back and forth. Yeah. That's more or less what it is. So just be used to it. I'm sure they're like, I think they have a way of just going to run outside for a little bit, run back inside. Do your clean mm-hmm. jerks a bunch of times. Um, so it'll be interesting just seeing it. I've never been to Knoxville. I've never seen the uh, basketball stadium that it's in. So, but I'm ex- I'm sure they it's going to be like real running. I, I doubt there's going to be treadmills. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be stairs involved too? Sure. Like, like it's, you can't, like the events, the workouts are written the same. They are different experiences. You cannot compare event one of Europe to event one of California or I'm sorry, North America West purely yeah. because of the burn. Like yeah. that's still cool though for those athletes. It's just, mm-hmm. sorry, man, you had to run uphill for 200 meters. That kind of sucks. So it's just one of those things <laughs> where it's, is going to be what it is. So yeah. deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you think T is going to dominate or do you think she's going to like, just to pretty much like set the stamp saying, Hey, I'm it's going to be really for- tight for the first two days. Like I, it, the hard part is it's, it takes, um, it takes mo- like you start seeing really like the points start being spread out. Cause it's one event Friday. It's two Saturday. It's three Sunday. Mm-hmm, I yeah. think it's the people are going to be like, Oh, she's not dominating. And it's like, you watch it at the end of the weekend and it's like, okay, there is a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you think like Emma Lawson and like maybe Alexis Raptus have a, a shot of like being on the top of the podium with Tia there or, or like anybody else have like maybe an oh, opportunity? I would say Alexis does. And yeah, actually, you know what? Like it's going to be a dog fight. It really like, okay. How's, how's that wrist injury? Kind of a big that's, deal. That's like, what I was going to ask. Just ask. As well. Like you yeah. just got to ask, like if I'm just trying to predict this, it's like, I think Tia is going to do Tia things and Tia is going to be back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's so gonna... as long as that, as long as it doesn't flare up, which I don't know much about baby wrist as I believe what the injury is called. Um, so I'm, but knowing her like high level athlete, like her and Matt were always very big on taking care of their bodies. Like as long as nothing crazy happens, like it's just going to probably be, could be a problem, could not be, but it's going to be Emma and Alexis to probably pressing her pretty good but Haley like Haley Haley's gonna be really good at a lot of these events like Haley probably does have a good shot of being in the top on a on a podium but I still think yeah. it's gonna be Tia at the top at the end of the weekend yeah so do you think that with Haley um she's with a new camp obviously and she's left mayhem so do you think that mayhem kind of burnt her out and with like all the expectations she was getting or it was just like too much for her or eh, no like there's people at Mayhem. It's like, no, she got a new coach. She found like, she took time away. She clearly learned a lot about herself, worked on herself and objectively it looks like she's having fun. Yeah. Like, like having a very fun time training. So uh, I'd be scared. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be real, real worried. Um, yeah. If people are thinking she's written off, like she is back. Yeah, if if anybody looked at her her uh, latest post, it's insane. Like her, she's like a comp week, comp week, and I was like, "Damn!" Like she looks really fit, really fit. So yeah, I I mean I I could pull it up right now, but I I won't. But I'll. But anyways, um, so do you do you, do you have a dark horse pop possibly in the women's side that may have a shot of? getting into the CrossFit games that maybe no one else thinks they may? Um, no. I'm looking, I'm looking nope. right now. Right now, it's like, here's the thing. My dark horse is purely Annika Greer, and she's not a dark horse. Mm-hmm. There's nothing about her that's like, like people, she's no name, and I am like all in on her making it. Um, I think like get yeah, Caroline Prevost, like that's the thing. It's like a, just a really deep field. If anybody's gonna really show up, like it's McKenna Enslin. I have a feeling like she's gonna like really put on like 
a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a big, big thing for her. Um, I think people are going to be shocked when she shows up. Okay. All right. I'll definitely look into that. All right. Let's go to the guys real quick. Let's see. Okay. I, I don't know what I don't know. Like we can go teams Luke too. Parker. Well, no, it's like, let's just, we'll hit the men. Like, I think at the end of the day, men's side, like, I'm just going to say that I think Dallin, Dallin and Adler for the weekend, Adler's mm-hmm. probably going to end up winning. Ah, and I forget, like, Roman's there, like that. It's like, it's just going to be, I'm excited to see Travis. Yeah. Because I think Travis is going to go back to the games this year. Um, and everything, I think he has a very, very good chance. Um, but Jack Farlow, he's going to be a fun name just to see like how much he's really starting to round out himself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then shout out to my boys, uh, Marquand Jones. Um, oh, he's Austin back Spencer. in. Okay. Hell yeah! Right. <laughs> what? No, 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 no! He never left. Well, you never left. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm no, no, sorry. no, 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 Now I get to get you for that one. Nope, never so. left. Um, <laughs> so super excited to see Quan do his thing this weekend. Um, Austin Spencer is going to be there. I think like these events, like he's going to really have a fun time. Mm-hmm. And it's good to see Austin back in the, back in the games too. So yeah, that'd be, super that'd be pumped awesome. for him. Yeah. Yep. So um, then we got like, I think Dre from Mayhem, like, he has a lot of team experience the past couple of years, so he'll be fun. Luke Parker is really mm-hmm. continues like to, from where I thought he was to where he is right now. I think he's in really good shape. I think it'll be cool yeah. to see what he does. Uh, but again, if there's somebody I'm rooting for to get to the games, it's Christopher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's never been. He's like he's been close, but not. Did he not go there? In 2019. I, I don't always, like. I always forget. Him. I'm checking. I'm already doing it. What do you think um, about no, what do you think? The, yeah. What do you think about Jorge Fernandez? Do you think he has uh oh, he went to the games uh twenty twenty? Yeah, on team last year with Invictus. Um yeah. so it's like I think he's got a he's gonna have a yes, I he has the he has the experience, but mm-hmm. again, it's like like eleven spots. How many people went to the games there? Like it's absolutely insane. Yeah, a lot. So, a yeah, lot like that's that's the big thing for me at the end of the yeah. day well even even uh devin kim she went individual from the teams yep. last year from invictus and she made it to like she placed like 23rd or something like that or something like that last um this this weekend yep and so so and mike Ma- she mike also start- had a dealing with a back injury well that that's I what think. i was gonna say i'm like yeah. she she didn't go team because of a back issue but yet you go individual where it's more taxing on the body compared to the team yeah it's again but it's like hey like my friends in the military like if you're having a flare up you can't tie your shoes like th- this is all a, if you're having back issues it's a are you good that weekend or are we not mm-hmm. yeah yeah but um let's go to the teams real quick. Obviously, we're hoping for Hannah Hardy and her group. Actually, I don't even know if oh, there we go. Um hopefully her team makes it to the makes it to the CrossFit games. Yep. So um I don't really obviously Crypt, CrossFit Krypton's there, CrossFit Mayhem. I don't know. I mean, I really don't really follow the t- that many teams as much as I should, but obviously peak 360, you know, CrossFit Milford's going to have a banger of a team. They always yeah. do. Um, I would also say 12 labors is going to have mm-hmm. a team that shows up. Um, and the like CrossFit soul, like usually, always has one um it'll be really fun to see how uh the mayhems team do um Mm -hmm. and ocean state i think those are going to be some teams that come out of there but i'd be um next to uh let's see who's on like especially yeah i think the yeah we're gonna see mayhem at back of the games this year yeah not worried yeah no no yeah i don't even know crossfit southie white i've never heard of that like obviously they might be from south boston so um, you, you think, yeah, Mr. yeah, Mr. Massachusetts, just throwing it out there. Just, uh, just a guess, you know, just throwing this out there. 
Yeah. So what what yeah. team what team is Hannah on? Um. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at Southie Frank Minervini. Like, he's very fit. Um. I believe. Give me a second. Because she's not with TTT. I don't think. No. That's. No. No, she's uh, I found yeah, it's CrossFit addict, addict. AJ, okay. um, Hannah, Justin Riedelbach, who's been on numerous teams and was on a team with Hannah before she went to Florida, and mm. uh, Melissa Hoof. Okay, okay. Well, we're hoping we're hoping for that team to make it. So um, positive vibes only. Yes, positive vibes only. So I'm excited to you... see them on that overhead squat workout. Yeah. So I, I do you so. Do you see like a lot of like more people like interested in the teams or like for when they during like during semifinals or is it just like mainly just all individual? Well, it's if you go if you go to like the if I'm trying to be like re- you know what fuck it CrossFit never gave a shit about teams and they consistently just still don't care because they're like oh hey we're gonna have you compete only on two days it's like hey and we're gonna make you take a PTO day to show up it's like guys what are we doing? Mm-hmm. It's it's absolutely frustrating when. I can say this having watched it like teams so much fun to watch because you're trying to coordinate a ton of stuff, especially when it gets to worms um, and synchro work. It's really fun to watch. And it's just disappointing because the coverage, like they deserve the coverage. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's really frustrating that they keep getting the shaft on it. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, I would say like, yeah, maybe not the coverage for like masters and like teens as much as like, you know, teams, um, or, or like indie, indie people at the games, but like, yeah, masters, like everyone was like, Oh, we just, or even the, the adaptive too. They're like, Oh, we, we should get a platform too. But here's the problem. Like no one's going to watch really like who wants to see, who wants to see I, a- like, I would, I would, here's the thing. No, people want to watch. It's their families. Like if you want to watch show up, like yeah. it's again, we need to keep creating these spaces so we don't lose the sport. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going to stop banning. Like people want to watch it. We can't say people don't because there are people out there that want there. Again, the NBA wasn't super popular up until the eighties. And then it kept taking off with Larry magic and MJ yeah. and then LeBron and then Kobe, LeBron, Steph, like everyone else is carrying the torch, but it keeps growing and growing and growing. WNBA started in the nineties. And it's now like a lot of people are like really the, again, the normies of the people are now starting to give a shit about the WNBA. It's been around for like 25 years, guys. <laughs> like yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, it's one of those things. Like we can't just create it overnight. It's keep showing up and keep doing the damn thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just hope the masters and teams get like, even a, the adaptive too as well. Like, I'm going yeah. to masters. I am going to masters and oh, nice. wad wheel games with Kevin Ogar. Like they do a phenomenal job with all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm excited to go to, um, Alabama at the end of August, um, be in the corner for one of my best friends in the, or not honestly my best friend in the entire world, Dex Hopkins. Mm, yeah. I mean, I wish, I wish he came on, but all, all good. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I just, I just hope, hope that at least the masters get to grow more because those are the people that have the money compared to the other people. And so they need to grow that a little bit better to get more money coming keep, in. So we gotta keep doing it. Like it's not just a single year thing. Yeah. That's definitely. the most important piece. Yeah. So um we're getting close to the end. So um what are your final thoughts? And we'll do the rapid fire questions for you since Dex is not here. Okay. Uh well, do we want to do rapid fire questions and then final thoughts? Sure, we could do that. Yeah. So, okay. um, what I obviously you talked about two seventy five snatch, but what are your goals, yeah. business wise and personal wise? Um, so I am looking to get a promotion at my job uh, before the end of the year. So working on that right now. Um, let's see what else. Then okay, so that's a professional. Uh, like CrossFit wise, I want to snatch two seventy five by the end of the year. Um, personally, I am trying to just lose some dumb weight that I picked up over the past year I'm trying to lose 20 pounds. <laughs> like I wish I could say like there was something like really like ah, just to get back into something else. Like, no, it's, that's my other personal goal is just to focus on my own nutrition. Yeah. So how is that going to affect the snatch? Do you think, you know, sometimes gonna, like, you... dude, it's going to work beautifully yeah. for me. Okay. Because all, all right. I, like all essentially I'm just going to start like just 
I know it's going to actually end up working. Like it, it was like, you're losing weight, but you're getting stronger. It's like, yeah, that's actually what happens when you eat like a more balanced, robust, like diet full of protein and carbs with minimal fats. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um, okay. So next question, what is in your gym bag? Uh, currently in my gym bag is a tripod for my iPhone, my weight belt, and then my back, like the rest of my backpack is like a pair of lifters and like barbell clips, tape, like the, the CrossFitters, the pseudo like quarterfinal starter kit. Let's just call it that. <laughs> what kind of clips do you have? Uh, the Rogue um, Oso clips. Okay. They okay. used to be Oso. Then they got bought by Rogue. They're really great. Like they, the plates don't slide. That's my favorite part about them. Yeah. I, so I bought some, uh, some collars off of Amazon and they have like the rubber on the inside of the collar. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's almost like the, the rogue, um, the, Oh, what is it? The rogue, um, grip collars or whatever, like they have. And so yep. they just snatch in and they don't move anything at all. Gotta love it's them. like, it's, it's amazing. Cause I've, I've been to a bunch of gyms with their clips and, it is not pretty, especially when you're doing multiple reps and dropping and the weight at the top. So, got to so. everybody's using them. And if they got a very busy affiliate, that's what's going to happen. That's why, hey, if you want nice things, bring your own. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, all right. Next question. So, um, if you had a chance to get a sponsor, what, like, what would be a good sponsor for you? And, like, how would you, like, help their relationship out? Um, so if I'm looking for a sponsor, um, like just like of any, any, probably in the CrossFit space, like the the thing is, it's like, I grew up in Nike person. Like everybody wants Nike is there like, but that's not believable. Mm -hmm. I would say like, if I'm right now and I want anybody to sponsor me, like I would love to have, um, rad. I think they're like streetwear based marketing campaign with their athletes and their shoes is probably some of the best marketing I've seen in CrossFit lately. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's like, just absolutely, that's more or less why they've taken over, I think in the space of why people like, they're like the cool people shoe to me now. Like, um, and that's not a shot at the other brands that are out there. Um, but I would like buy their products, tag them on Instagram, try to be creative and be a little bit different from what they're already doing in the space. Like if mm-hmm. I'm trying to like actively work with them, like I think their runners are great and I've run in them two, three times a week. Um, okay. But that's like, it's trying to create content to do it. Um, but also knowing it's going to be, it's very difficult to like get eyeballs on that kind of stuff. Yeah. And also, and also um, I believe brute brute strength is brute. Well, I don't know to call them brute, but brutes using the marketing team from rad for their marketing help oh. for their program. Yeah. Which is great. It's like individualized yeah. programming. Like I like what brutes, what I see, um, come through my feed every now and again. It's awesome. Um, it's just trying to make sure like, how are you being different than the other, um, programs and everything in the space? Yeah. Like, and if I, you're going to do those kinds of things. It's always like, how are you being different? Yeah. And I love their market. I love rad's marketing the way they do like the 80 style, like theme and like all of the, motions and graphics and stuff like that it's all skateboarding top top it's all yeah all skateboarding and that's what one of my favorite parts about their entire thing yeah yeah um last question so uh actually no second to last question sorry um so let's just say it's your last day on earth um how do you want people to know you as a guy that was extremely loyal and showed up for his friends no matter what which which is completely true so completely true i would hope so yeah i mean i mean you know like if all right so for the listeners that are listening to this xander knows so many people in the crossfit space like i'm like how the hell does he know all these people it's it's insane he's like oh i can i can get you this person i can get you this person it's like he he's he knows he's well versed in the crossfit space and i'm surprised he doesn't come on any other podcast like he, he doesn't doesn't get on any other podcast like, i'm just not just, that like i i like people that enjoy like my content enjoy my content like i was driving in the car today and i have a very close one of my favorite people in the world um nick o'sullivan has to like at nick O'Sully on instagram he's got two hundred thousand followers he's super successful and 
didn't ask for 200,000 followers. Like that was never his goal. He's a great photographer and videographer. Um, yeah. He's a way better human being. Like I'm, I just am genuine and just kind of how, like if you see my stuff online is usually how I'm going to be in real life. Like I'm not mm -hmm. going to just change it up. Like I did back squats to Pania this today. I was probably posting about Metallica last week. Those two things don't go together. Like <laughs> I, I like listen to Chris Brown. Like I am genuinely the person, like I enjoy making the content that makes me laugh and I'm not going to try to just, I'm not a huge person that likes flamboyant takes. Nick doesn't do that. Nick works ass off with his business partner, Jeremy, who's also a close friend of mine. They got a great business They are You do it the natural way. If you're more like the more authentic you are, the more authentic the friendships and the relationships that you'll show that will show up for you. And mm -hmm. you'll bring the most out of them with everybody that you're with. Yeah. True facts. So uh, where can people reach out to you if they have any questions? I'm on Instagram exclusively um, at Arfbark, uh, A-W-R-F-B-A-R-K. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, um, concerns, uh, just want to rant about what I post on my story. Um, it's usually music and a lot of Snoopy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so how, how did that Snoopy thing come out? Like you've just been a big fan of it since you were a kid? Uh, yeah, because Snoopy is the greatest dog of all time. True. Like True come on now like everyone grew up on peanuts like snoopy snoopy and woodstock are like peanut butter and jelly to me mm -hmm. <laughs> never get stale always always around just always gonna bring a huge smile to your face and i'm gonna yep. find some creative song to hopefully put on the whatever instagram post i find that day so i will yep. beat that into the absolute ground because uh, i have a baby face but i am a child at heart yeah at the end of the day yeah, definitely. All right. Final thoughts. What, what are you, what are your final thoughts? Um, I'm like super ex like happy with how these workouts are going, um, at semis. Um, I think they're like really well programmed. I'm really excited to see who that rounding out of the games field this weekend, um, specifically coming out of North America East. Um, Paige goes back, Caroline goes back. Um, and watching Otka punch her ticket for the first time. I'm really excited to see how this entire thing falls, like shakes out. Awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the East. So what is, um, what is Tom's final thoughts? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Just maybe I, I'm just looking forward to the, the East region and seeing like who like seeing who's going to climb the leaderboard and make it or, or who's going to fall or, or, you know, I don't know. My my thing is, is like, how many people are going to get popped if they get popped? For... So, like, there's going to be somebody I can almost bet you it's coming out of non North America and non Europe. True, true. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's looking... the, like, which is a sad thing to say, but it's like, it's going to be, and honestly, it's probably going to be a team's athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and so, it's, uh... again, it's not, hopefully not bad. It's, they weren't blatantly trying to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah just looking forward to seeing that and next weekend just hopefully getting a chance to watch more content for crossfit and produce more content and yeah and try to keep try to keep the kiddos busy busy because they are out of school so since wednesday what can i do what can i do what can i do it's like yeah go outside yeah. you can only say it so many times yeah i want to play Fortnite. no no you've already played it for like the no. past like couple hours already so how about new yeah <laughs> but uh all right well thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you later peace appreciate you